Welcome to another episode of Operation 3731, a weekly video series in which we focus upon memorizing and meditating upon Scripture. The name of this series refers to Psalm 3731, which says of the righteous man that the law of God is in his heart and his steps do not slip. The promise of this text is that if we memorize and meditate upon the word of God, we will walk in righteousness, in confidence, in strength. So each week we will memorize and meditate upon one verse of scripture, adding to that verse week by week until we have put whole chapters of the Word of God in our heart. In 2021, we are memorizing Romans 8. We began last week with Romans 8.1, which says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This week, we add verse 2, which continues, For the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Let me take just a few moments to give you some truths from this verse on which you can meditate as you memorize. Number one, I want you to note the way these verses fit together. Verse two begins with the word for or because. It could also be translated. So verse two is providing the grounds from verse one, okay? In essence, verse 2 answers the question of why. Why is there therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus? What has happened to change God's verdict towards those who are in Christ Jesus from one of guilty to one of not guilty, from one of condemned to one of justified? The answer is, is that the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. The next question then is, what are these two laws? The law of the spirit of life and the law of sin and death. Well, here I take law to mean something like power or principle. Okay, law equals power or principle rather than a set of commands the way we might put the law of Moses. In fact, I think the ESV would do us a favor here if they would capitalize law when it refers to the law of Moses and not capitalize it when it refers to a general power or principle. Now, the reason why I take this to refer to a power or principle rather than a set of commands is because this seems to be the way that Paul used the word just a few verses previously in Romans 7, 21 to 23, where Paul says, so I find it to be a law, okay, that's power or principle, that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God. This would be an example of law with an uppercase L, a set of commandments. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members a another law, lowercase L, waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin and death. This or rather these four instances of law, I take to refer to a power or principle. And I think that's the way that Paul is using the word law in Romans 8, 2. So back in Romans 8, 2, the law of the spirit of life would refer to a, the power or principle of the Holy Spirit who liberates us frees us from the power or principle of sin, which leads to death. That power or principle that rules over those who are not born again. If you picture sin as an enslaving power that holds us captive, making us obey its commands, leading us towards eternal death, that is the law that the law of the spirit of life, that the Holy Spirit frees us from, he liberates us from. That law of sin and death is a law that 
that holds all of mankind captive by nature. All of mankind by nature are slaves of sin, condemned to death. But then the Holy Spirit, whom Paul calls the Spirit of life, comes in the gospel and he breaks our chains and he sets us free from condemnation unto death and he leads us out of the dungeon of law into the sunlight of grace. Once again, this happens only for those who are in Christ Jesus, like we saw last week in verse 1. Only those in Christ Jesus, united to Christ by faith, experience this life-giving liberation of the Spirit. Everyone else, all who are in Adam, remain in the dungeon of sin under the sentence of death. The last question, then, is obviously how. How does this liberation take place? Well, that's the purpose of verse 3 that we'll look ahead to next week. It answers the question of how did the law of spirit of the spirit of life set us free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and of death? The answer we will find is that God sent Christ to die for us in order to remove the penalty of sin and to rise again and send forth the Holy Spirit into our hearts to overcome the power of sin. So this week, I want you to focus upon this fact. If you are in Christ Jesus by faith, you are free now from the penalty of sin, right? There is therefore now no condemnation for you. And you have the Holy Spirit of life in you to enable you to overcome the power of sin. So it's freedom now from the penalty of sin, freedom progressively from the power of sin. You do not have to sin. As you memorize verse 2 this week, remind yourself, I don't have to sin. The law of the spirit of life has set me free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. You are not sin's slave. You do not have to obey sin's commands. Remember that as you battle against temptation this week. But if you do sin, and you will, remember that you are not condemned. That's what verse 1 was about, even in this battle against sin. Sometimes succeeding, sometimes failing, sometimes achieving victory, sometimes being defeated. Whether you are victorious or defeated today, you are not condemned if you are in Christ Jesus. For though victory of, over sin's power is a lifelong process, freedom from sin's penalty is now, as Paul stated back in verse 1. So as we close, let's say Romans 8, 2, allowed together to inscribe it upon our minds. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Say it again with me. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. I invite you to repeat this verse to yourself throughout this week and to meditate upon the truths it contains. And then remember to put it together with verse 1 in order to begin building Romans 8 in your mind and heart. So Romans 8, 1 and 2 together, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death.